I have been listening to one of those um, like Christmas scene musics. <laughs> when I'm anxious, I have to listen to something like this and I just have it on. And this is like a jazz Christmas music in the background type thing where it's just a nice Christmassy picture and it just plays like jazz music, which is festive themed. It brings me much joy, it brings me much calmness. The reason I'm anxious um, is because, one, I dropped Orin off at preschool this morning. This is his third morning. And um, every morning I walk away crying my eyes out. It's really, really difficult. This morning he was being really, really brave. And it broke my heart because like, I just don't want him to have to be brave. I want to protect him from everything. Seeing him like really trying to sort of hold in his tears and he gave me a goodbye wave and he was really tearing up. God, I'm gonna start myself off again. I need to stop, but I just don't want him to ever have to be brave, but I suppose that's life sometimes. You sometimes have to be brave um, as long as you've got like a really strong foundation, which I believe he has. We have given him nothing but love and support and strength throughout his whole little, little life. And he's only there for three hours, so, and it's his last morning this week, so we've got the rest of the week and the rest of the weekend and stuff like that until next week. He's doing really well though, and it's such a wonderful preschool. It's an outdoor forest school. Um, his key leader is absolutely wonderful. She's such a lovely lady. And what's lovely about today is um, one of my close mum friends, her son, who's the same age as Orin, is starting today because they did staggered starting and they really like playing with each other. So I think that's why today was a little bit less teary. Um, so he went in and because I told him like, your friend is going to be there today and, and you're going to see him and it'll be his first day. I think he felt, um, he was looking forward to that. So that was really good. But I still walked away feeling sick to the pit of my stomach. Um, I've actually had like a really bad week nausea wise because of I think just all the anxiety and um, the second thing that's causing major anxiety is uh, I think we're exchanging today <laughs> don't just don't um, but I think we're exchanging on our house today which means there's no turning back and we can pretty much <sighs> You know, breathe a sigh of relief, it's happening. But yeah, it's actually making me feel sick talking about it. <laughs> oh, the acid is just astronomical at the moment. Anyway, so to keep very, very busy, I thought the one job I cannot do when there's a toddler here is sort out some of the toys. The toys are getting a little bit out of control. Um, so we've got this unit here, which is the Trofast unit from, U from UK, from Ikea. It's so great, it looks really nice, it holds, um, it's really great for toy storage. Obviously in the last year we've just been collating things, collecting things, everything's sort of in the wrong drawers, there's lots of things that just aren't really working anymore or things we don't play with, but I know if I'm doing this with a toddler, um, it would be chaos. Everything would be out, everything would be like going here, there and every, everywhere. I've tried it before and it didn't work so I had to like abort mission. <laughs> And I thought, well, what's going to keep me busy this morning is sorting this stuff out. So what I'll do is I'll talk you through like the organisation I've done so far. What is really good, just organising it, I've come away with em completely empty drawers, which is amazing. It just shows you how much you sort of hold on to that you don't need. I've got a rubbish bag and I've got a donate charity bag. I've also been using these storage bags. And let me tell you, these storage bags are incredible. I'm going to link them below. They're from, I uh, from Amazon. They're completely waterproof, like really sturdy bags. And they're huge, like you can pack a lot in there. Um, and I've been putting, so I've got four bags so far. I've all are filled with all the new babies bits. Um, so it's really good to know where everything is, especially as we're moving house. Um, it's gonna be really chaotic for like the next few weeks in terms of like, where is everything? I mean, you know, I can just put those in a cupboard and I know, well, this bag's all the baby's clothes and this bag is things like breast pumps, bead bits, baby, like everything that's gonna be needed in those first few weeks. So it's really good that I've got that sorted. And then I've been filling up the other bags with um, toys. 
that I'm not gonna get out now. I'm going to wait until we, until we move. And then I'm gonna get some of these toys out. It's really, really good to like put some toys away and then get them out at another date for your children. Um, just because when everything's out, this like, especially with Oren, he gets really overwhelmed. Things, he just doesn't play properly. He just like, oh, I've got this, I've got that. He doesn't know what to do. And I do feel like Christmas and birthdays really add to your toy collection, sometimes in like a really overwhelming way. So I thought, I've got to do this before Christmas. Yeah, it's like a toy rotation thing, but I'm gonna get some of these back out when we move um, and replace what I'm gonna leave out now. Some of the stuff that I've put away. So in a few weeks, he would have totally forgotten about quite a lot of this. And then when I get it back out, hopefully it'll feel really refreshing to him. And we've just moved house to so the new environment. It will feel really like, oh, like positive. Like, oh, I remember that. I love that toy. And it will remind him of his original home. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. So in here so far, I've got some games. A bag of wooden blocks, which you can't go wrong with. I honestly think, so I've got loads of wooden blocks. And I've got this, which is the love every um, toy block thing. I genuinely cannot recommend investing in something like this more. This is going to be played by my grandkids, my grand, my grandkids' kids. It's such a good investment, like real wooden block toys. They play with it all the time. We turn it into stadiums, racetracks, um, towers, just everything. So I've got some wooden blocks already in the love every storage thing and some wooden blocks in this fabric bag. In here is his um, dino bag. So um, it's just a fabric bag. I always keep any fabric bag you get, keep it. It's such good toy storage. Um, but this is dino bag. I'm, I think this is the only thing I might have to get back out because we do play with this quite often and I'm not sure if he can wait the next sort of three weeks. Um, but we'll see. I've put it away anyway because I know he'll be so happy to see those again when we move. Paddington, this puzzle game that we love to get out. So I put that away. Another puzzle game. Then I've got a huge monster truck tractor thing. So that'll be good to put away and get, get back out. I might put another couple of vehicles in there actually. So this rubble it's rubble on the double so i think i'm going to donate to someone or give away to someone we rarely rarely play with it it's a um, of every caravan uh wooden caravan it's really really nice but we just rarely play with it we forget about it put the transformer in here this is an original vintage transformer it's lawrence's cousins from when he was a child and from like the 80s or 90s um okay so i'll put the transformer in there rubble and there's still loads of tons of room in here. Zip the bag up. It's just so handy. The handiest thing ever. Even when we move, if there's empty bags of these, it's gonna be so great for storing clothes and like your winter clothes when it's summer and your summer clothes when it's winter. It would be really good for storing bedding in your linen cupboard and things like that. So yeah, let me talk you through the toy storage. These two were filled with vehicles and trucks and things like that. And I've managed to clear it down so there's only one, which is great. So this is completely empty. So we can think of something that maybe could be stored in a better way. And I can put it in the Trofast unit. We've got blocks. Uh, we've obviously got the toy that's toys that's gonna go into storage until we move. We've got lots of Lego. I've got another Lego storage box upstairs, but I think I'm gonna have to order another big Lego storage box. We are big on Lego in this house. So um, there's constantly Lego everywhere. A big tin of marbles. You can see it's absolutely full to the room of marbles. Um, I've got a Yoto, I'm going to talk you through my Yoto stuff in a minute. Empty pot, which is great. That had um, bits and bobs in, which we no longer play with. Um, I've got like the soft sensory and play throw things drawer. So like soft bean bags, these scarves, which are really good for like most ages. Arts and crafts, pens, pencils, um, stationery in this one. So pencil cases full of stuff, little paint brushes a ruler, crayons and all that. So that's that this is a drawer that's go we go to regularly. All of this stuff we go to quite regularly, so that's why I've left it out. I've got games, so in this little bag, some dominoes, some animal dominoes, card game, which is a really good matching card game we love playing. And this is the French vocab matching cards. Got another empty drawer which is amazing. Um here we've got oh I'll probably put the pens in that one. Um, we've got pads and painting, 
pads and stickers. So sort of arty things. Here we've got most of his Hot Wheel cars. As much as I love Audi, um, when are they planning on... In fact, they can't now because it's actually become a thing that we rely on too much or Orin relies on too much. Selling Hot Wheel cars at the tails. <laughs> Every time we take Orange to Audi, we have to get him a new Hot Wheels car. I know we don't have to, um, but we do because he loves them and they're a pound or something or one pound 20 and, but yeah, it's just become a bit of a problem in this house because he loves Hot Wheel cars now. Um, so we've got a whole drawer dedicated to Hot Wheel cars. Um, every now and then I do slip one in the charity shop bag. Um, but he loves racing them. We've got this red track, which I found on Instagram, which has gone down very well. The red race track, it's made out of like recycled rubber. We always do racing and, but yeah, thanks a lot, Aldi. This one, we've got these sort of animal figurines. So lots of animal figurines. This like really satisfying slug thing. Um, and then this one is uh, sort of miscellaneous. So everything in here, doesn't have a home yet so I need to put the chalks outside in the mud kitchen um, these two belong to a toy that's currently upstairs in storage so I need to put them there fidget toys this is a lid for something that I was looking for and um, so that drawer is going to come upstairs with me for a bit and I'm going to sort this out upstairs yeah so I've got empty drawers which is really really good um, so feeling a lot more accomplished Are getting there yesterday I did the understairs shoe cupboard and coats let me tell you it's really satisfying decluttering your house I just feel good I feel good getting all this done right just before I whiz off to collect Orin I wanted to show you the most amazing parcel that Yoto sent me it's funny because recently I've had quite a few comments asking about I think about the Yoto and I want to say I wholeheartedly recommend it. So obviously they have sent me this stuff. I'm not actually working with them. They're not paying me. I'm ridiculously lucky. So is Orin. I'm also a customer of theirs. I've bought lots and lots. I've spent lots of money with Yoto um, because I genuinely absolutely love it. I think it is such a great thing for kids. If you've never heard of Yoto, it is this really, really cool. And I thought I'd unbox this with you and set it up with you so you know what to do. But it's a very, very cool um, music box, which you can put cards in. Um, it connects to the internet so you can listen to podcasts. It has its own Yoto radio, which is lovely. Just a quizzes in the morning for the kids. Weather, you can play number games on it. Um, you can get a ridiculous amount of Yoto cards, like so many. I'll talk you through mine in a minute. All of my Yoto cards, bar like a few, bar like five, um, I've actually bought myself because I just love it. And I've got this Yoto pouch thing and it's just full of cards. Um, but it's such a great way of staying off the screens um, because it is a tr it is difficult. Um, Orin doesn't ever go on an iPad. However, we do love a bit of CBBS in this house and maybe a bit of Netflix. So I don't know, I, some days he watches more than others, but generally I try to keep it not too long. However, the Yoto is such a good in-between. It is the perfect, you can play unlimited on this because it is such a wholesome toy, if that makes sense. It's such a wholesome thing for children to have. Um, so I'm going to open this one. This is the third generation one. Yeah, and it does um, like wake up routines, nighttime routines. I might have to set that up lately because Orin is waking up at all kinds of times in the morning. And this morning it was 4.30. I think because at the moment I think with nursery he's a bit unsettled because he's normally like not up that early. Anyway, oh look at it. So child friendly. Um, it's a very robust, I must say. Orin has dropped it a bit. You've got a plain Yoto card that comes with it, so you can add whatever. You can 
Um, we've had one of these before. I've had a plain one. We've recorded our own audio story on there when he was really young. What I would always recommend is if you're gonna go ahead and get a Yoto, get an adventure jacket for it because children will drop it and they will want to carry it around. It's very robust, but there's nothing like an extra bit of protection in rubber form. So this adventure jacket is the frog soup. I just, I love that name. There we go. And they carry it, well, this is what Oren does. He carries it around like this from room to room. For us, the Yoto is literally the perfect morning thing. You know, when it's very tempting to turn this TV on straight away. But if we do that, we tend to find it really difficult to turn the TV off after that. And then it becomes he's watched way too much in the morning and he's a bit groggy. And also it's a really nice thing to do whilst we're in the kitchen, sort of getting his breakfast ready, making cups of tea, trying to like wake up a bit. He'll be at the kitchen table with, um, and he'll be with this, with the Yoto player. He'll be picking cards out of his book and we listen to stories together. Also brought it to Car Journeys quite often at is really good and you can play any card, um, any Yoto card through your phone as well, which you connect to your car. So we've basically got amazing storybooks on hand all the time, whether it be on the Yoto or through the Yoto app. And as I said, I am a customer of Yoto. I do their Yoto uh, monthly club card thing. That's not, not how you say it, but it's like their membership where you pay nine pounds a month and you get a choice of four Yoto cards, which is incredible, four a month. Yeah, so this is the charger. This is the little lead. The same lead as like a, um, a recent iPhone lead, which is really handy when you've got the same things. Um, but what I'm gonna do is set the Yoto up up here. I always set it up on the top of the toy unit and um, just so it's easy for him to reach to find uh, I'll turn it on so it has the time because it will just display the clock when it's not being used. So that's really handy actually for us because <laughs> we don't have a clock in here. Right, let's set it up. They also very kindly sent some wireless headphones. How cute are these? They're so cute. They're, I mean, they're going to be too small for me, but um, so wireless and they've got controls here. Oh, how lovely are they? So Yoto wireless headphones which is really nice so he's going to really look forward to using those and they've also sent a starter pack of cards so my first 100 words crackling fire it's actually so cozy having this on story shed oh robin hood songs from the playground hotel flamingo excellent i'm going to put those in the folder to set up i mean i might need to charge it first but you just hold the on button at the side let's see here we go face it down a light comes on so you can change that light to whatever color you want which is really nice and obviously now it's up the light's gone off okay so as I need to go and pick Orin up what I don't want to do is start setting this up and be late um, but I need to plug it in connect it to the internet and um, we'll set it up together shortly so for you, I'm gonna be back right now, but for me, I'm probably gonna be back in a couple of hours after I've taken Oren out. Don't mind me, 24 hours later, looking how I feel, rough. So I picked Oren up from preschool, as I mentioned, and he really wanted like mummy sun time, which was fair enough, cause like it was such a big week for him, three mornings at preschool. He was done in, so we popped to the farm together and just had a couple of hours chilling at the farm together. It's really lovely. And then I ate something that really did not sit well with me yesterday. Obviously, I get a lot of nausea with um, my pregnancies anyway. I'm nauseous most days, but if I wake up nauseous, it tends to ro like completely wipe out the day for me. I woke up nauseous the other day and was sick and then just have felt rough ever since. But yesterday I was starting to feel better at the farm. Then I ate something, I don't know what it was. And then I felt very rough again for the rest of the day. Very, very rough. And then today I was feeling a bit better and made the really wise decision to have a cheese and onion sandwich for my lunch. Like who does that? A cheese and onion sandwich, it just has, stomach acid written all over that lunch so now I feel really rough I've gone really pale I just don't feel great which is fabulous but Lawrence has taken Oren out he didn't have preschool today so me and him have been out 
most of the morning and then we went for lunch then I had that silly sandwich <laughs> Um, but Lawrence and Aaron have just popped out uh, now anyway to the skate park so I've got a little bit more time to set this up carry on setting this up so what we'll do is we'll set up the Yoto and then I'm going to work out what I should do with the blackberries that I've been picking recently because I need to do something with them they're sitting in the freezer right now so setting up a Yoto is really easy so just get it plugged in and then turn it on this on button on the third generation is on the side um, and then download the app and then what you'll do is you'll do set up a player so it's going to talk you through basic instructions setting it up so make sure your Yoto player is plugged in and there's no cards inserted continue press and hold both the orange buttons for five seconds until you see a six letter code appear on the display there we go Connected it to the Wi-Fi. Green tick, that's always um, reassuring. <laughs> Account joined. Nearly there, you're almost done. But before you go, we believe the best listening is safe listening. Oh, that's quite good. So it's gonna give you um, safety guidelines, which is good. Okay, that's great. So it's got all of my cards that I've got. Cause obviously I've, I've had a Yoto account for a long time. So I've got um, lots of cards. Someone asked me what the best recommendations were. Genuinely, I just think it depends on your child. Um, Laura, Lawrence, Oren loves dinosaurs. So we've got some of the dinosaur ones, but they're free. They are free, which is amazing, those cards. Duplo Number Train, which is actually such a lovely, it's like an eight minute bedtime story. Um, I've got Horrible Histories, and that was actually mainly for me. When I was growing up, my nan used to buy me all the Horrible History books, and genuinely, I learned the most from Horrible Histories. School, I don't remember anything from history. Horrible Histories? I remember lots. Paddington, he loves Paddington. And then we've got lots of the Julia Donaldson ones, which is like Tabby McTat, the Scarecrow's Wedding. Anyway, when Oren's using, obviously he doesn't use my phone to access the cards, he uses his little wallet. And he just picks out a card. And um, you drop in the card, you've got a younger child and they don't put it in like perfectly, it's fine. Whatever way this card goes in, it plays the story. I'll just do it upside down just for the sake of it. And look, we've got a little Paddington. Turn it up. First met Paddington on a railway platform. Um, you can change, change chapters. The holidays. But yeah, just so nice. Take the card out. And if you've got a child like mine who loves putting them in, taking it out, putting them in, it will carry on playing from where you last took the card out. Um, unless you just start it again. So... It's very set up for children and children's quick hands. It's really, really genuinely a lovely, lovely thing. Obviously I'm gonna link everything down below, but I truly think it is a, just a gorgeous thing to have for your children or your grandchildren. It teaches him independence. He's also got to love like different types of stories and different types of music through just being on his own and being able to explore it in such a safe way. So yeah. I'm going to leave this out now with the cards and he's going to get it back home and be very excited to play with this. I'm going to go into the kitchen now, do a little bit of a tidy up and see what we can make with the blackberries that I got from blackberry picking. Uh, if you're wondering, if you're wondering, I haven't yet heard if we've exchanged. We were meant to exchange on our house yesterday, but it hasn't happened yet, so I'm fine. I'm fine about that. I'm, fi I'm fine. <laughs> Make a blackberry and apple crumble. So about lighting. This is it now, winter and autumn. We've got funny old lighting. Um, hopefully the lighting in my new house is gonna be a wee bit better. Here are the blackberries. Um, I've just given them a really good wash, taking away as many of like the 
bits of tree <laughs> or bits of branch that I found. Some slow berries have um, got caught in there. Slow berries are extremely sour. I'm still finding little stalks, so just pulling those out. I'm throwing them in my sink, by the way, not on the floor. Um, anyway, so blackberries washed. Um, I sprayed a little bit of um, white wine vinegar on them and then gave them a wash. The white wine vinegar will just get away, get rid of any nasties or bugs or anything like that. Um, I also found tons of apples in the fridge that could do with using up. You meant to use like, is it brownberry apples for apple crumble? Like a really tart apple. These are a mixture of green and red apples. I don't know the brand or the name. So I'm gonna make a blackberry and apple crumble Put a bit of cinnamon in there, delish. I've just texted Lawrence, told him to get some uh, good quality vanilla ice cream on the way home. We don't have vanilla ice cream. So a good quality vanilla ice cream with this blackberry crumble will be necessary. Approaching evening time now. Um, I'm about to put my skincare on, but I'm about to put my apple and blackberry crumble in the oven. Um, so we're gonna have that with the ice cream. I'm very excited. What I did was I made it up, prepared it in the oven proof dish, and then I put it, covered it, and put it in the fridge for the day. And then I'm gonna oven bake it now, and we're going to serve it with ice cream. Are you serve with ice cream? Or serve with custard kind of person so super duper simple to make a fruit crumble you can make lots and lots all throughout the season and it's like really seasonal pudding you can use apples and blackberries like i've used now which is a great harvest one because this is when all the apples are ready or have fallen same with blackberries in the winter you can do like more rhubarb and pear maybe summer you can do a strawberries and apples crumble <gasps> there's just so many options what i'm gonna do is um put that in the oven now but i thought i would catch up with you again about some of this uh, sweet bee stuff so i mentioned this in a vlog last week they um sent me a lovely package full of skincare sweet bee organics is um all organic um produce natural produce there's no nasties in there no toxins which is great for one being pregnant but for me, who's um, actively searching for ways to use less toxins in my everyday life. And it's a slow game because there was more toxins in our life than we think. But one of them is like what I put on my skin. Your skin is an organ, it's your biggest organ. So these are for my face. So this is a Sweet Bee Organics Glow Moisturizer. I mainly use this in the morning because it's a glow. It's got like vitamin C in it. It is gorgeous and every time i wear it lawrence says how amazing i smell it smells like stepping into a spa <gasps> i've been using a lot and um, as you can see it's got chunks of like orange in there it smells incredible it's the most hydrating lovely moisturizer it's so hydrating but not oily sorry just like living for the stomach acid right now loving it um, and then I use this one mainly at night, which is this, the Sacred Skin Facial Oil. Um, nourishing Organic Frankincense and Neroli Face Oil. I flipping love this stuff. Both of these I'm buying again. Like these are now my go-to skincare. First of all, this stuff smells amazing. Um, 
so well spread. You know you sometimes get those oils go a bit clammy and a bit like pappy or bitty. This one just silky smooth. So yeah the most hydrating oil ever. I use it all the time. Obviously I do um, a sort of wash my skin, clear my pores out as much as I can. Um, for pregnancy right now it's lovely because my pregnancy skin has been dry <laughs> dry dry let's put the crumble in the oven and do a little taste test because my mouth is watering for this apple crumble apple and blackberry crumble Right, it looks divine, it smells divine. Does it taste divine? I'm not just saying it, but that is delicious. So, so nice. The easiest, most delicious pudding you can make at this time of year. I'm glad the blackberries have taste nice because they were a bit they just didn't feel quite ready this year when I was picking them, but they taste divine. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to go and enjoy this. I'll leave the recipe down below for you. Let me know if you make it. Please do because um, it's so easy and so delicious, but the cinnamon is vital. So good.